afternoon. So we're outside and we have a nice forest. It's a Carolinian forest in Canada, so it has a fairly good, rich diversity of species down there. So what we're going to be doing today is harvesting some of that microflora. And one of the techniques that we do that with is with rice. So here we go. We have some white rice. And we put it in a pot. And we've got about half water and half rice there. And we'll just turn it on to high. And we're going to cook that for a few minutes. And we're creating our uh, microbial mix. So that's basically it, just plain white rice. And you're not cooking it 100%, you're just cooking it about half. So most people know how to make rice, so you're just boiling the rice until it's a little bit soft. And then we'll go on to the next stage. So you can see the rice is boiling away. I just want to show you another element. We have here kombucha vinegar. So inside you can see we have the kombucha mother, which is uh, a yeast. And <laughs> it doesn't want to rotate too much, but you can see we have multiple mothers in there. And they just form over time. And they keep feeding it sugar. So usually I put like a half a cup of sugar in there and then I just leave it alone. And eventually I use like demerara sugar or, or cane sugar. Something that's got all the nutrients still in it rather than just plain sugar. And eventually we get turned it into kombucha vinegar, which is really strong. And as you can see, I take like a quarter teaspoon in a glass of water. So you still got the kombucha, the live culture bacteria in there, but it is also, it's a, it's a very strong vinegar. So if you're balancing your medium, when you find it's a little bit too basic, you need a little more acidity, then you add the kombucha vinegar in there, and it's a, an excellent uh, method to do that, to bring the pH down more to a neutral pH, or even a little bit of acid, depending on what you're, you're trying to grow. Here you can see we're just finishing up, and I'm just grabbing a little bit here, and I'll just take a little bit, and you can see I can squish it between my finger and it's still solid. So if you're cutting it with your fingernail, the center will be still solid, but the outside is, is partially cooked. So you don't want it too soft or it'll just be mushy. So that's just about right. So then we're just going to take these little bags and we're going to fill this up with some of this rice. It's just a more of a, you want to, when you boil the rice, you don't want it to be too uh, overboiled, or else it'll just go right through the holes in the mesh. I'm just going to take about half of this into here. And then we've got a nice little bag. I'll just work that together, close up the opening, make sure we got all the corners. Give it a little shake, a little bit of a squeeze so it'll have a little bit of a ball. And I'm just going to take one of these twist ties. This one's from uh, vegetable, from broccoli. Give it a twist, and then there you go. You have your uh, inoculum for your bacteria. So this is what we're going to put into the forest down there. And we're going to collect some of the, the forest bacteria and the forest fungi. And we're going to add that to our super brew, which we're going to do next. And then put this twist tie on it. I left this little bit of a an extra end on it so that we can find it. We're going to bury it under the ground so I want this sticking up and you can see it. So I'm just making a little more oblong. So 
So the reason we're collecting all the uh, bacteria and the fungus from the forest is we're trying to make our super brew. And so this is one of the essential elements we need. We need as much biodiversity from the soil as we can get. And so we've made these rice balls, basically, and we will have a really open mesh, but you've only uh, cook the rice down so it's just hard so when you you put it into your bag it's not going to squeeze out and if it gets rained on it's not going to disintegrate and the whole thing won't come right out and so you have this and we're going to stick it in the soil and leave it for two or three weeks and then that medium the rice will be colonized by all the different fungus and bacteria that's in the soil and then we can use that in our inoculation medium you can use here i've used basically a uh, it's a nylon bag that i've used for clothes and we've also you can see the fabric here it's got a lot of holes in it you can just use a, a pair of old nylons as well this is just something that i had that was old that was lying around that was perfect and it uh, because it's not cotton it won't uh, with organic matter you might uh, it might degrade after a couple of weeks so you don't actually want that to happen but we can reuse this again and again collecting more and more bacteria from the forest So I'm going, to be plant, I'm going to be planting these in uh, the soil here, and you can see it's a fairly rich wood. Um, it's fairly open. It has had a bit of disturbance. Uh, we've had emerald ash borer kill a bunch of the ash trees, but uh, otherwise it's a fairly healthy ecosystem, and we're slowly going to be facilitating getting returning that to a more healthy ecosystem by planting trees and different wildflowers back into this forest help it return to more health. And so what you want to do is find a nice location. I'm just doing it close to this tree so that I can find it again easily. And I'm just going to take one of these. And you want fairly moist soil is what we've got here. Because you want the, the soil to have be biologically active. If the soil is really dry then maybe you want to moisten it a little bit to increase the biological activity and because it's a fairly healthy forest you've got a good uh, ground cover of different uh, leaves and twigs and things like that i've just found a bit of a bare spot that i can dig i'm going to put it in into the soil Move this aside so you can see what I'm doing here. And then I just dug a hole here, a nice big hole, and then just gently placing it in there, and then loosening the soil a little bit so we can get it back in there easily. And you can see my tag. Pack it down tight. So here we're using rice because readily, rice is readily available, but any sort of grain would work really. I um, mean, Mexico they're using sorghum, I mean you can use corn, just make sure it's all crushed down. So just having it all broken up and then cooked, so it's partially cooked and then put it into the bag. So it just has a, it's a carbohydrate source and it's got nutrients in it and so the bacteria and the fungus will go after that. And it's kind of like a, a trap. We're attracting them all in here, and then we're har later on we'll dig it up and then we'll, har we'll harvest that and we'll bring it back into the house, or, and then we'll put it into our super brew, which will add all sorts of micronutrients and other sorts of bacteria and fungus from a natural source, which has all sorts of creatures in it already. And what happens with the uh, uh, agricultural situation or a lawn, whatever you're doing with with a garden, is all those ecosystems have been depleted you know you've been using chemical fertilizers and you've been using uh, to other toxic chemicals in your garden and so that's killed off a lot of the bacteria and things like tilling 
also makes it so that the you're breaking up all the microorganisms as well and so you, you've disrupted that whole ecosystem so we're trying to do different things to, to bring back as much biodiversity to the soil as possible so that we're increasing the chances that we're going to have good success with our plants that we put into the soil after and all those bacteria and fungus are going to feed the root system and it creates a whole ecosystem where the plants grow nice and strong and they and they also bring in the uh, the nutrients into the the soil and it feeds the bacteria so you create this symbiosis i'm just going to put this down we have a lot of animals here so i'm just going to put an extra marker there i put it right on top so that hopefully because this is uh you know it's it's food so if uh, an animal we've got raccoons and we've got squirrels and we've got chipmunks and groundhogs and <laughs> you know all these things love would love to eat this themselves so we're just kind of trying to hide it from them and hopefully in two or three weeks when we dig it up it'll still be there So it's really important to be in natural areas so that you're, you're collecting the local microflora that's going to be going back into your garden or into your naturalization project. So we're doing a restoration project. We're trying to increase the biodiversity of all the plants on the surface. But uh, this process is also about increasing the, the biodiversity of inside the soil, increasing all the so soil microbes because it's really important to have all the native microorganisms in with the plants so that the, the symbiosis happens and that the, the plants will grow up together and the root system of the, the plants in the soil will interact with all the microbiota and they will bring in the nutrients to them and they will secrete out sugars into the soil and so it creates this ongoing process where the plants are feeding the soil and the, and the microorganisms are feeding the plants. So if you don't have that relationship, you don't have the, uh, then you don't have strong plants. You don't have uh, the extension because the, the microrhizae in the soil, they, have, they go out much further than the root system and they can pull in different nutrients, pull in water and pull in different things that the plants need and the plants photosynthesize, they produce sugars and they, they feed the bacteria and fungus in the soil. So just going out, I mean this the technique that I've showed you is kind of like a, a sampling technique. You can go into different natural spots and different healthy communities and take a, a put a rice bag into the ground and then you're kind of you're collecting the different creatures from that forest and, and from these different natural areas. If you're doing a prairie, you want to put some into a prairie and collect up those different organisms. So looking for these different reference ecosystems that you can bring the organisms back to your property and make a much healthier ecosystem.